In the blue corner, standing in at six inches tall and a half an inch wide, rigid with a firm base, while not super flexible, he keeps his balance, stays focused, and packs a mean punch. With his hair on fire, he is ready to tackle almost any challenge you throw his way, still considered the newer kid on the block, introducing Woody. His challenger in the red corner, also standing in at six inches tall on a stable base of his own, with a narrow figure, he excels in flexibility, yet still remains one of the most consistent and most popular fighters of his generation. He may look harmless, but if you light his fuse, he can quickly get hot. Many of you know him well. It's Cotton. And now the time has come. Let the battle begin. Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. Many of you probably already know Woody and Cotton, but if you are new to this channel, my name is Wade, and on this channel we talk about making candles, similar products, running a candle or handcrafted business. And if you're not already a subscriber, you may want to consider hitting that subscribe button below if any of that content or those type of videos does interest you in the future. If you decide to subscribe to the channel, also click that little bell to turn on notifications. That way when I post a new video, you are notified and alerted rather than just hoping that YouTube randomly shows you the video. <laughs> I appreciate all of you for being here as always. Today's video, if you haven't already figured out, is about wood wicks versus cotton wicks. Pros, the cons, which ones you should use or maybe use both. There's no really right or wrong answer to this question. This is really meant to be an informative video to let you know about some of the pros and cons if you are curious and not sure about one of them if you've never used it before. Hopefully that can help you make a better, maybe educated decision on whether or not you want to give the other one a shot or like I said, consider using both. Now for me, I do use both types of wicks. So I use a ton of wooden wicks, but I also use a ton of cotton wicks and I use all sorts of different types of cotton wicks and various sizes. Now we will talk about that here in a few minutes, but I did want to let you know that I personally do use a combination of both. In fact, I can show you here. These are, this is one of my wood wicks here. This is actually a red one. I think I showed this actually exact candle on a previous video. Uh, but yeah, so I do use wooden wicks. This is a, from a Christmas line of candles and I have them in a few different styles. These ones are not dyed, but I also sell regular cotton wick candles as well. It's one of them here. I know another Christmas one, but uh, yeah, so I do sell both types of candles. And no, if, in case you're wondering, not all of my candles are dyed. I do make candles that are not dyed as well. In fact, I did a recent video on that as well if you are interested in checking that out. Okay, so enough about me and my candles. But let's go ahead and dig into the pros and cons of each type. Now, we're going to start with wood wicks, mostly because when I made my graphic at the beginning of the video, uh, the boxing analogy, I started with wood wicks, so we're going to be consistent. So let's start with Woody the wood wick. Now, there are a lot of pros to using wood wicks, the first of which is that they are more unique. Now, they're not as unique uh, as they used to be. They used to be sort of a novelty item. You only saw a few different companies using wood wicks. Uh, they were really kind of fancy and, and a hot commodity when they first came out. They're not near as rare or unique as they used to be. However, they are certainly more unique than your standard traditional cotton wicks that we're gonna be talking about later. In fact, if you go to shows, you're gonna often run into people that have no idea what a wooden wick candle is. They've never seen one, they've never used one. And so it definitely does generate a lot more buzz than your standard candle wick. So that is certainly a pro of using them. Next, and a very important benefit in my opinion, is that wooden wicks offer you the ability to better wick certain jars that are tough to wick with a traditional cotton wick specifically ones that are either larger in diameter or jars that are kind of awkwardly sized. So there are some jars on the market that are difficult with a cotton wick because they're too large for one wick, but kind of too small for two. And so it's kind of a tricky size. Well, that's a great time to use a wooden wick. In fact, those jars behind me, while I can wick those with cotton wicks as well, that was one of the main reasons I used a wooden wick in those. Now, again, I do use both in those, but my point is, is that certain jars are easier to wick with wooden wicks because they make a wider flame, so it's easier to get a larger melt pool uh, without having to go crazy with your wick size. Another tremendous benefit of using wood wicks is that you don't need some type of tool or clip or something on the top to help keep your wick centered in the jar while it's cooling after you pour your candles. They're firm, they're rigid. I mean, they, they have some play, they have some give, right? But they stay centered in themselves. You just simply insert those in the tab like you saw in the intro to this video and they just stay in place. They stay taut, they stay straight. You don't have to hold them with some type of clip or wick centering tool 
so that they don't move while the candle is settling up. So that's a really nice benefit. It cuts down on extra materials and supplies, and it's faster because of that as well. Equally as important, for the similar reasons, they also stay more centered during the burn. So you get a more even consistent melt pool in your candle because the wick isn't moving or leaning or curling or anything like that. Where it starts is generally where it finishes, as long as it's secured to the bottom properly. Another benefit, which this may or may not be a benefit to you, this is more of an optional thing, and that is the crackle of the wick. Kind of mood setting, and it's just kind of neat to hear that crackle with the wick. Now, you may not like that crackle. I know some people that they don't really like it. One person told me it scares them. It sounds like a fire in their house, like, like a chimney or fireplace. But I mean, that's kind of the point of the crackle. And so many people really like that. It's interesting. It's it's fun, um, it's soothing, uh, but it's also optional and it's your choice. You don't have to use wicks that crackle. In fact, Wooden Wick Company that sources most of the wooden wicks on the market, uh, they have wicks that do crackle by design, some that do not. They're called whisper wicks and they're meant to be just quiet. Uh, there's, so there's, there's different options and it's completely up to you. But for many people, that is an advantage. Trimming is also another potential advantage to using wooden wicks. Now, I'm not saying that they don't need to be trimmed, but the way you do it is easier. Uh, you don't need scissors or nail clippers or wick trimmers or anything like that. Uh, when it's time to trim a wooden wick, it's just because the wick has gotten a little, the burnt end has gotten a little tall and you can just simply snap it off with your fingers. It's that simple. Uh, and so it's a little easier for people to keep their wick trimmed more appropriately. Now, another advantage to wood wicks, and this isn't unique to them, but as far as hot throw goes, they do have great hot throw if used properly. Now that is gonna depend entirely on your wax type and your fragrance oils, of course. But the reason I wanna mention hot throw is because it gets a faster hot throw. Because they are wider, a wider flame, and you're gonna get a larger melt pool, typically than you would over your traditional standard cotton wicks, which means you're getting a not necessarily stronger hot throw, although many people say that you would, but you get a faster hot throw. So no, no longer waiting 30 minutes or an up to an hour for a regular candle to start giving a good throw, wood wicks will generate that hot throw a lot faster. Now, from a business perspective, another advantage to using wooden wicks is your ROI or your return on investment. The reason is, is because you can sell wooden wick candles usually for more than you can your regular candles. They have a little bit of a luxury feel to them. They seem a little more sophisticated. We talked about them being more unique. Customers are willing to generally pay a little bit more for a wooden wick candle. Now, yes, wooden wicks themselves cost a little bit more than your standard cotton wicks do, but the difference between that and what you're going to be able to raise your price on that candle, the margin is much larger. However, with good, there is always bad. So let's talk about the disadvantages or the cons of using wooden wicks. The first and most aggravating and certainly probably the most popular answer you're gonna get is that they are inconsistent, sometimes just downright unreliable. And that is simply because it is made out of a natural wood product. It is not made with a kind of machine consistent process of weaving and spinning fibers and cotton together. It is a natural wood that has been basically redesigned for candle wicks. So it's not like it's completely random and it's not like you're just grabbing a stick from out in the yard. I mean, it is designed for candle making, but just the nature of the material itself, they can be inconsistent. Now, a lot of people, this deters them or it really aggravates them and causes them problems and it makes them think they're making bad candles when they have some candles they just don't want to burn properly. They might make six wooden wick candles, four of them burn great, and two of them are like, one's under wicked and won't stay lit, and the other one wants to smoke like a chimney. And they think they've done something wrong, but anyone that's had that experience, let me just assure you that that affects me too. We all have that problem, including the big brands as well. Wooden wicks are not gonna be as consistent as cotton wicks. So it's just kind of par for the course. And you have to expect that, that each candle might burn a little bit differently. And if you ever have any that just completely fail on you, then you might need to consider retesting or just own that and replace the product if that ever happens to you, if you get complaints. Now, I'm not saying any of that to scare anyone away from using wooden wicks. I use a lot, I sell a lot. There are entire companies that all they sell are wooden wick candles. It's just something to be aware of. They can be inconsistent, finicky, unreliable, whatever word you wanna use, it can be aggravating nonetheless. The next problem that I think exists with wooden wicks is sourcing. There are a lot less wooden wick options available and a lot less sources to purchase them from. And so it can be harder to get them and it can be harder to get them quickly or it can be harder to get them in the volume that you need. That isn't to say that you will have issues with it, but. Anytime there's less of something, it can be harder to get them. So I think that's just kind of 
goes without saying, but sourcing can be a problem. There's just less manufacturers and less distributors of wooden wicks than there are of cotton wicks. So it's just worth mentioning. The cost, uh, I mentioned this earlier, is a little bit higher on wooden wicks. They definitely cost more than your cotton wicks do, but I also suggested that that is offset most of the time by a better return on investment because you were selling those candles for a little bit more. So while that is a disadvantage, I do think that is offset by one of the advantages. Now, the next thing to consider is wooden wick sizing. Now, the reason I have this on a con is you have a lot of options. There are many incremental different sizing options when it comes to wooden wick. So you have choices and you can fine tune the right wick size for your application. The, the issue is it can be confusing on how to try to tackle that. And the reason is, is because you're not just talking about the size of the wick in, in the width. So quarter inch to three eighths an inch to half an inch, five eighths inch and so on, but also the girth, the thickness of the wick. If you haven't seen my other All About Wooden Wicks video, or if you wanna check out some of the wooden wick suppliers, you'll see different sizes mentioned. So wooden wick company, for example, calls their wicks 0 0.02 thickness, 0 0.03, 0 0.04. And then there's the width. So you're really dealing with two different factors when you're coming to the right size. And then there's other variations as well. Crackle wicks, booster wicks, whisper wicks. Yes, cotton wicks have a lot of options as well, but sizing on those is usually more straightforward. You just simply go up in size or down in size. Well, wooden wicks, you're dealing with width and thickness. And so it's just a different testing process to dial in the right wick. Another disadvantage of wooden wicks, in my opinion, is that they can act quite differently in different waxes. So you might have a wax that your wooden wicks work superb in, and then you might have another wax where the wooden wicks tend to struggle. And so it doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It's just like with most products, including other cotton wicks and fragrance oils or whatever you want to use as an example, they work differently with different other products. So it's, it's about finding that right combination. Uh, and that can be difficult with wood wicks is they don't play as nice with some waxes as they do others. And last but not least, I touched on this earlier when I talked about them being inconsistent. If not sized or trimmed properly by the customer, they may not want to stay lit or they want to smoke like a chimney. And sometimes it's also just random, even if no one's doing anything wrong. Sometimes it's just frustrating to get them to behave the way you expect them to. Okay, so that's about wood wicks. Let's move on to your traditional cotton wicks. Now, when I say cotton wicks, I'm really meaning all of your traditional wicks. Most of them are cotton based, but some have paper cores, some have zinc cores, some are uh, different types of cotton and paper mixed together. There's a lot of variables and types of wicks out there. So when I say cotton wicks, I'm really referring to your traditional standard wick. Let's start off with the pros. The first pro is that there is just more options. There's more types of cotton wicks and there's a lot of incremental sizes of those cotton wicks. The reason that's good is depending on your wax, your jar, your fragrance oil, the amount of other variables, you have a lot more options of wicks that might work better with your application. Now that does mean potentially more testing, but at least you have a lot more choices. So it's not just about more options, as far as types of wicks, but it's also about more sizing. So let's use an example like your HTP wicks. They've got 52, 62, 73, 83, 90, Eco 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Premier 700 has incrementals by fives. It's like 710, 715, 720, 25, 30, up to 790 or something. So there's a lot of different sizes, which helps you dial in the right wick choice to get the optimal burn which leads to another advantage, and that is the ability to have backup wicks. So when I do wick testing, I always try to find two wicks that burn well, my favorite and then a backup. And having a backup is really, really beneficial. If you have a hard time sourcing the first one, you have a backup wick that you also know performs very well. So it could be you have a hard time getting those wicks, so there's a delay on getting those wicks, or maybe someone starts manufacturing those wicks. Whatever the case may be, it's nice to have a backup. It's harder to have a backup wooden wick because they tend to either work well or they don't. And so you find that right wick and that's usually the one you stick with. Sourcing is an advantage that these wicks have over wooden wicks. There's a lot more manufacturers making many more different types of wicks and significantly more distributors and suppliers for those wicks. Another pro is that they're just very easy to use, very straightforward. Most people are very familiar with those type of wicks. It's probably the wicks you've already tried or first tried when you started making candles. You don't have to put them in their own clip. You just buy the pre-wicked assembly and they're also very consistent. So these are machine made. They have a process of woven fibers and cotton and filaments. So the wick manufacturing process is very consistent, which means your burning performance is also very consistent. Typically, if you make a batch of 10, 12, 20 candles with the same cotton or traditional wick, all those candles are gonna burn the same for the most part. Now, there are other external factors. If you've got them burning in different areas of the house and you've got 
drafts coming in or wh whatever the reason may be, there can be some variance, but for the most part, they're gonna burn the same. And then the last advantage of cotton wicks is they are a lower cost. So they are very, very cheap. You can get a hundred wicks for around 10 bucks. I mean, you, you're talking next to nothing the cost of wicks, which is great. It's it's an, a very important part of your candle, yet it has a very, very low impact on the cost of your candle. But just like their challenger on the other side, they have their own drawbacks as well. The first is that you need something to keep them centered and straight and taut when they're in the jar after you pour your candle. So you poured your candle, your wick's already in there, and you're ready for your candle to start setting up. Well, you can't just leave it as is because the wick is not gonna be in the middle when it's all said and done. It's gonna fall to one side or it's gonna move around on you. It's gonna curl up and dip down somewhere in the middle of the candle as the wax shrinks and will pull down on the wick. I think most of you probably know that you have to use something on the top of your candle to secure your uh, wick uh, to stay centered, stay in the middle of the candle and to stay straight so it doesn't move around on you. I don't know how much of a disadvantage that is because we're all used to doing that, but it's certainly a disadvantage compared to wood wicks. Another con is a more inconsistent burn pool. So the burn profile of a cotton wick is fairly consistent, but you will have a melt pool that isn't always dead center. And the reason for that is that cotton wicks, once they do start burning, uh, they're thin, they, they're not rigid. There's nothing really holding them in place other than the wax. And as that wax softens up, the wicks can start moving to one side. They might lean on you. Some wicks are designed to curl. There's a lot of factors that can cause wicks to move around on you while the candle is actually burning. And that will cause your melt pool to also get a little more inconsistent. I did a recent video on a tip that might help some of you that are struggling with that problem, but it is just something you also have to accept with using wicks. The next the disadvantage is that you have more choices. Now I know you're probably thinking, wait, I thought that was an advantage. Well, it can be, but it can also be a disadvantage. The disadvantage I touched on was that that just, it's more options and more options can mean more testing and possible more frustration and it's harder to get started. It can be a little bit more overwhelming because there are so many wick types and so many wick sizes. Next up, and I also talked about this earlier, is that it can be difficult to single wick mini jars and it can also be a challenge when you need to multi-wick them, whether using dual wicks or triple wicks. If that is new to you, that can be a new challenge and something you have to experiment with and, and do some practice with, figure out how to dial in the right sizing because you can't just put in two wicks of the same size when you were gonna use one wick before. You have to generally go much further down in sizing now, I talked about hot throw with the wooden wicks, so let's mention it here. I don't think there's much of a difference in the strength of the hot throw between cotton wicks and wooden wicks. I think a bigger factor in that is the wax type you're using, the size of your jar, and your fragrance oils. But a disadvantage of the cotton wicks, which adversely, of course, was a benefit of the wood wicks, is it takes longer to get the hot throw with a cotton wick. The melt pool will not get as large as fast, so it can take some time to really start smelling your can on the house. But again, most people are used to that. Most people expect it. It's not a huge deal but it's certainly a little bit of a drawback compared to wooden wicks. Oh, one other advantage, so this should have been moved up, about cotton wicks is that they will burn longer than wooden wicks, so your candle will generally last longer with the cotton wick. Because they don't burn as fast, they're not consuming the wax as fast, unless you're multi-wicking, you can generally get a longer lasting candle with a single cotton wick versus a single wood wick. Okay, so that wraps up the pros and cons, or at least many of the pros and cons to using both of these type of wicks. Who won? In that battle, in that boxing ring, in that match of wooden wick versus cotton wicks, woody versus cotton, who do you think won? Which one do you think outweighs the other one? It's a tough choice. It is a tough choice because one might have more advantages than the other one, but its cons might be more severe. So it's a difficult choice for sure. Now, if you're wanting me to give you a recommendation, that's not gonna happen <laughs> because I'm not about to make that decision for you. My goal here is to give you some of the information and hopefully help you make a better educated decision for yourself. One of the reasons I make both wooden wicks and cotton wicks is because I couldn't make that decision myself either. But being aware of the advantages and aware of the drawbacks to using each wick can not only help you maybe make a better decision on which ones you want to use, but also makes you a better candle maker because you know what the issues you might have to deal with are and how to troubleshoot those issues. And you might know the advantages and how to highlight those pros to your customers. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this breakdown of the wooden wicks versus the cotton wicks and had a little fun with it as well. So thanks for sticking around this long and I appreciate all of you for being here. Reminder, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I hope we'll see you all next time.